also forgot to mention, I didn't get any grease in because my grease gun only has like a straight fitting on it and it hits on the fender. I can't get it on. So I have to buy a flexible end or something for my grease gun. Not happening. Not happening today. All right, so got the hub kind of painted. We're checking my thread engagement. Make sure the wheel is all the way pushed on here. It's not, it's, let me put a nut on. wire into about where the taper ends. Measure it with my finger. Um, I need two hands. Hang on. So, I measure that. It's like exactly maybe a little hair over that but probably getting blinded by the sun but that's like almost exactly three-quarter thread engagement so I think technically that is legal hopefully because I'm not buying any more studs not gonna do it not doing it. Alright. Oh, we're going to put it on blocks. Went and picked up one of these doohickeys. I think it'll help. in there.
All right, so I think I got most of the stuff disconnected from the engine. I have trouble getting that hose off the radiator. Uh, got all the wires removed, hoses. Uh, I believe the fuel line is mostly removed. Gauges. Um, heater hoses so I guess what's left is motor mounts exhaust bell housing bolts um, the first we need to get that radiator out which the way I did that the bumper has to come off so that means the air diam has to come off I think we can leave the headlights and turn signals this time but yeah, the radiator comes out the front. So once we get the V8 in there, we got to decide if we're going to keep this. So I don't want to cut that out right away. Hopefully we can keep it. All right, I got the bumper off. I can see my air dam fabrication going on under here. Um, probably just take it off. I never did finish putting on the other spring strut on the other side, but I don't, I'm not going to make this priority to get this done. So we're going to take it off. If I have time to put it back on, it, it can go back on. But I think we're going to have interference issues right here if I try to move my radiator the way I'm thinking so might have to go back to the drawing board on that all right air dam is removed next step remove oh I gotta remove this bumper mount yeah then I can take out the radiator all right radiator is out Let's get this flex fan off. And then, I don't know. I think I have to go run to Northern Tool or Harbor Freight or something and get more of those um, furniture caster dealies. I think I'm gonna plop this on that. I don't really need to put it on an engine stand so we'll do that and then I'll just take a little road trip we're gonna take that off it looks like and maybe I'll take it off there all right fan and battery cable well apparently it decided to rain while I went inside that's great Next step, I think, is to pull the, pull the transmission out. The mailman came by. The dog does not like the mailman. I don't either. But all right, so I think it's still freaking raining. It's probably not good for the old carburetor there, huh? Great, great. I guess I get to crawl around in the water. Fun stuff. Step one, pulling the transmission. Pull the shifter knob. And boot. It's funny, this will be the second time I remove this transmission and engine. It originally came from my 80 Pinto wagon. We converted this car from automatic to standard. So. 
I'm gonna save the old girl. Maybe rebuild her and put her in something else. All right, well, the thunder is starting to roll. I don't know why it keeps trying to rain. It's blue over there and dark over there. <sighs> but we just about got it. We just about got the transmission ready to come out. So I think we got all the bell housing bolts pulled, starters pulled, not a pinto. You're supposed to pull the rack and pinion to get the starter out. But I didn't bother to do that. I just disconnected the starter and it's gonna hang tight in there until the engine gets pulled. Uh, speedometer cables pulled out, reverse switch wires pulled out. That sure looks kind of like the plug that's on the uh, S rod. I hope that just fits right on there. Transmission mount is loosened. I didn't do any of these bolts yet. We'll do those when, when we're ready to drop it. Pulled out the exhaust, glass pack, and the adapter pipe. So, um, yeah, just kind of waiting to see if it rains. We'll get a jack in here, jack that up, drop the transmission. Yeah, I'm just gonna wait like half hour and see what happens. All right, well, I got the transmission out, or down at least. I gotta clip off some wires, wire ties here for the brake light wire. And you can see my jack and blocking method was futile but we got oil everywhere it's great let's get it done let's see if i forgot anything Fuel lines. I gotta go down there and cut fuel lines. starter <laughs> uh, let's go up a little bit all right gotta go back how is that starter hanging on there well, I guess And that sheet metal and the wire. Well, hang in there, little buddy. Oh, there's a little zip tie I gotta cut too. Oh, maybe I can just. There we go. I don't think this cherry picker is gonna go high enough. 
probably gonna have to drop, drop the car. Uh, well, that's gonna be fun. I had planned on keeping the jack in the middle here. I didn't do that. That's starting to rain again. Great. Let's try this leveling doohickey. handy. Alright, I'm going to have to put the camera away so I can work in the rain. Maybe take that starter off. Yep, I'll be back. Well, I can't believe it, but it's lifting that thing right out of there. The old engine bay. I think I can go a little bit higher. damned. Whew. She's up there. Alright, I'm gonna go put this thing down. Alright, now that we got the old four cylinder out, we gotta kind of clean up this engine bay. Take the Dura Spark out. We have something for the regulator. We'll take that out to clean it. Coil is coming out. And we gotta find a spot to put this brake line lock. Thinking, thinking somewhere about here. I don't know. But anyway. I ordered, this is a Summit Racing brand, <clears throat> and I ordered the most minimal basic kit I could get. I didn't realize I need to adapt these from NPT fittings to, um, they call it the reverse, reverse taper, whatever brake lines are. So I'll have to figure that out. It's probably a good thing anyways, because I didn't know if I needed straights or 90s. I'll probably get two 90s. So. Alright, well, I already sprayed this down with the oven cleaner once and tried to mush it around with a brush, but I think we need to get a lot of this stuff out. I'm going to thin out this wiring harness that the mice chewed up. So. Yeah, I'll be back. Alright, so I have this soaking down again with the uh, oven cleaner. As you can see, I already kind of sprayed down the side with water. And all I'm using is one of these sprayers with plain old water to clean it off. And it's pretty satisfying. Pressure washer would probably work better, but I don't have one. I don't feel like running a hose out here. Works pretty good. tired though. Alright, well, the oven cleaner did pretty good. Might see if I can borrow somebody's pressure washer at all. Just make this thing really clean before I spray bomb blue on the inside. Um, I took the battery tray out. We we're actually rusted to, through two layers of metal here. That's nice. So, 
I gotta come up with something legal for the battery there. Um, I think we're gonna mount the um, brake solenoid up there. The alternator regulator was here, but on my 302, the alternator is going to be on this side, so we have to put it over here somehow. That'll be great. And so this is the S rod. I hook onto the bill housing. We're at about, let's say, 20 and a half from the bell housing face to the mounting bolts. And on this one, I forget what these are called, but they're German-made Pinto transmission. And that's about 21, so it's like a half inch closer on the S rod. So if we go back over here, this is the S rod mount, same as a T5 mount for a Fox body. And this is the Pinto cross member. Um, the holes just don't quite match. So we had to widen them out. So <clears throat> I have a lot of room here. Anyway, this is the back side. Goes towards the back of the car. You can see here the Pinto transmission was mounted to the back side of the slot. So technically we probably do have enough room to move it forward. Um, but I have to widen these slots out, so I'm going to probably give myself a little more room. Just because I don't know what I'm going to do about radiator clearance, so if i got to move back an inch, we may end up having to create one of these. So I'm going to get this cleaned up. I don't know, maybe some rust reformer on it before I start cutting on it. Get my ruler out and make dimensions in case I, in case I have to make my own. All right, so take a look at the motor mounts here. Got the Pinto 2.3 liter mounts in here. Um, and these are, this is the passenger side uh, Mustang 2 V8 mount. So if you line up, line up the bolt holes on the top, you can kind of see it sets back. I'm guessing about an inch. I don't have a third hand to get the tape measure on there. Uh, and then we got the driver's side one. That seems to be quite a bit more setback. Um, I don't know. I think I'm just gonna have to set it in here and find out. <clears throat> All right, so got the tape measure going. Passenger side one is set back one inch. Driver side one is set back two inches. Makes sense because on a Windsor and Cleveland. There's a one inch offset front to back um, on the motor mounts. So I think I'm going to take these out and just put in the other ones. I'll have to rig up some kind of bracketry for the bottom holes, but got to start somewhere. All right. Pulled the starter solenoid down from up here, sprayed that down with oven cleaner. Um, got the motor mounts out, sprayed that down with oven cleaner. Um, 
the heater blower has worked in here and I can't remember if I did this or if that's the way it was but it looks like somebody tried to splice in to the power leads and I think they're meant to go inside the cab like that you see this ground cable is out and screwed in up here that I don't know that fitting looks stock I don't know but this red wire comes all the way over here into the firewall through the hood release hole. Let's see where it goes in here. I seem to remember there was a switch I had. Um, Put up here, but I think this is the wire here. <laughs> it's going all the way back to the heater box. Well, let's go back to the other side. Okay, yep. Right there. Now that I'd help if I was looking at it. Yep, right there. This connector looks pretty corroded. Yeah, if I would keep aiming at it. I don't know. I think I'm gonna have to take this whole dash out and see what's left of the heater system. I don't know what the vintage air stuff has for something like this, but it might be worth uh, converting this. I don't know. That's if I get more money.